let's finish off Gen 1 with none other than Mewtwo. Of course, its stats are insane. 130 base speed and 154 base special attack is absolutely broken in the early game, and quite frankly, the late game as well. However, its level up move pool is not great. The only good attacking options are Confusion and Swift for a long time, so at least I get those early. I don't want to undersell Swift here. Without it, I would have to resort to struggle to hit Dark types. I beat the first three rival battles without even trying, Aster and Eclipse were not a challenge, and Julia also went down very easily. Victoria in the slums was another first try victory, so I'm just gonna skip over all of that real quick because it really wasn't interesting. And then of course you get to the scraggy battle gang in the slums. And Mewtwo lost a battle for the first time. Eight times total in fact. Dealing with the two-on-one where both opponents have super effective attacks was just a bit too much for Mewtwo to handle, for a little while at least. In the end, I just kind of had to get lucky with damage ranges and hitting through confusion. I just spammed Swift and got lucky on this attempt where I one-shot both the lead Scraggies, which is a damage range for both of them. This saved me confusion turn and a faint attack hit, which was just enough to let me win the battle in the end. I was actually a little scared for a little bit, but once I realized it was a damage range to actually get the KO, I knew it was possible. Cane round two was trivial, so let's just skip to the first pulse tang growth, which I'll show, but it was pretty easy too. I just spam confusion, three shot the thing. It did almost no damage with vine whip, very easy battle. Fern round two was a first try victory, but I was a little annoyed when Sandile wasn't a one shot and did pretty good damage with the super effective attack, of course. After I got a charge beam boost against the Dark Tricks, I was easily able to finish off the rest of Fern's team. Not scary, but I'm starting to not one-shot things, which is a bad sign. Florinia has field boosted super effective pin missile on her side, so I do need some luck here. I use confusion on turn one and then hope for a low number of pin missile hits or maybe a miss. Then I need charge beam to knock out the Maractus despite the field nerfing the damage and give me a boost. It's a range to KO from here, but of course I'm not going to if I miss. I decide to press on, this is only my fourth attempt, so at this phase I'm really just experimenting. And after a three pin missile hit, I take out the Maractus and get that special attack boost. I'm pretty sure this is over. But then luck turns around, and I get a crit to one-shot the Pharaoh Seed, which is great because it is another pin missile user. Cradilly brings me down to 12 HP, and I'm pretty sure I can clutch this out since it didn't use Sandstorm and I resist Mock Punch. Cacnea is no threat, and now it's time to see exactly how much Mock Punch does. 8 damage, which is a high roll, which puts me in range to die to nature power from the Cockney, except I level up and get 4 more HP, which means I will survive as long as it doesn't crit, and it doesn't! So Mewtwo defeats Florinia in only 4 attempts? That was a bit of a wild ride. Pulse Tango with number 2 with Taka wasn't an issue. Mewtwo one-shot the Execute with the Resisted Confusion. I don't really know why I went for that, but it didn't matter. I then attempted to get a charge beam boost. I didn't, but at least I one shot the Chatot. And the Pulse Tango did take a few hits to take down, but I was never really under any stress for this battle. Pulse Tango number three with Ace made a clean sweep of the Pulse Tango. First try of victory for each one. And I tried to get a boost against Zora, but didn't get it. And of course I can't get charge beam boosts against Boltoy, so I tried to take it out with a Swift, but missed the KO. After taking it out on the next turn, Roselia comes out and is obviously an easy KO with Confusion. Braxian comes out and I really want some special attack boosts so I go for a charge beam and I don't get a boost. Luckily it misses Hypnosis. I take it out on the next turn with another charge beam and finally get that boost I've been hoping for. And now it's finally time for the pulse and it doesn't look like it'll be a two shot based on my first attack. It uses growth which probably won't help it enough and indeed a Confusion fails to finish it off on the next turn. But Tangrowth misses a Rock Tomb, so I just take it out to win the battle. Gory's up, and despite the type advantage, it's always a bit of a scary battle due to the Poison Mist field, as well as the Skrelp having a Focus Ash. I, I can't deal with that Skrelp blowing my stats, so I just reset until I get a Confusion to cause Confusion, and then have Skrelp hit itself. After that, Skunk Tank comes out, who unfortunately I cannot one-shot, and it uses Smokescreen. Which is fine because I have Swift, though sometimes I will need to use Confusion. I can finish off the Skun Tank with Swift, however. After Marini Poison stalls me with Protect, I finish it off with Swift, which was actually a gamble because it was a damage range to KO it, uh, but it was more favorable than hitting Confusion through minus 2 accuracy. 
Now Crobat comes out, and I do need to gamble on a Confusion here, and it hits. Nidorina also requires Confusion, and it hits again. So now the battle's pretty much in the bag. Now Krogunk of course has Sucker Punch, but it can only KO with a crit, so I just attack, and it's weak enough that Swift can take it out, and Mewtwo can tank the Sucker Punch barely. And while the Astron Eclipse battle under the Grand Stairway is going on, I will kind of mention two things I've noticed about this particular playthrough with Mewtwo. One, Charge Beam seems to miss way more often than Aqua Tail did for Gyarados, despite them being 90% accurate. I would say Aqua Tail seemed to be more like 95 or 99% accurate, and Charge Beam seems to be like 80% accurate for Mewtwo. Additionally, because of how powerful Mewtwo has been in the early game, I'm kind of not paying attention, and I just kept spamming Charge Beam, thinking it was missing, kind of to point one, but, but it was actually Pikachu absorbing it with Lightning Rod. Thanks, partner. Anyway, let's move on to the Victoria Fern Gauntlet. I could probably one-shot the Pancham with Confusion, but I want those Charge Beam boosts, and I managed to get one before taking it out. Torcat isn't Dark-type yet, so I try to K with Confusion, but it doesn't quite do enough damage, which is, again, just kind of annoying how little damage I'm doing since I'm not getting better moves. Pikachu and Curlia are both one-shots, though Pikachu gets in its usual fake-out. As for Fern, Rhyhorn has bad special defense, so one Confusion takes it out. I have no choice but to use Swift against Crocorock because it is immune to my other two moves. It does take two hits, and it doesn't do too much damage with Crunch. I was actually kind of surprised there. But then, I didn't do as much damage as I was expecting with Confusion against the Roserade. And like I said before, I'm, I'm kind of really starting to feel the effects of this moveset problem. Dark Trex is out, and I knew I wouldn't be able to one-shot it. And then thanks to the defense drop from the Crocorock, Dark Trex almost finishes me off with a pluck. But luckily, I hold on and win the battle. And for round one against Cal, the Rainbow Field actually doubles the chances of secondary effects. So Charge Beam will always give me a boost so long as it hits. So after taking out the Torkoal, I was able to sweep through the rest of Cal's team very easily. I did try to use Swift just kind of for fun initially because the field boosts it and gives it a random type, but I kept rolling some resisted types apparently, and I just switched to Confusion, which is definitely the way to go. Of course, I couldn't have done that against Houndoom, but everything else I should have just done that from the beginning. Anyway, easy battle. And now we have a very difficult battle against Shelly, who of course spams the special attack lowering super effective struggle bug against me. I found pretty early on that the Telluric Seed was probably necessary so that I could spend one turn getting in a hopeful Charge Beam boost while not being hit by Struggle Bug. Unfortunately, Mewtwo cannot one-shot the Masquerade on turn one, so on turn two I do need to fight through the inevitable Confuse Ray Confusion from Illumise and take out the Masquerade, and I pretty much need to get to plus two here. Anerith replaces Masquerade, and I use Protect on its invulnerable turn to prevent it hitting really hard with Knockoff. Now, Anerith will only spam Aqua Jet since it's slower and is no longer under the protection of the Field Seed. Thus, I can pretty much ignore it. I need to get rid of Illumise because I really cannot afford to be hit by Struggle Bug. Volbeat comes out next, and it's tanky enough, unfortunately, to survive a plus two confusion, so I do get hit by that Struggle Bug and lose a special attack boost. However, I take it out on the next turn with a Charge Beam and get that boost back. Yanmega also falls to a Charge Beam, and now my special attack is at plus 3, so I can also one-shot the Araquanid, the 100% accurate Confusion. And I thought I had won, but Anerith surprises me with a knockoff that brings me a little too low on health, and then finishes me off with an Aqua Jet on the next turn. Many, many attempts later, I learned a few things and was playing this slightly differently. I start the battle the same, however, with the Field Seed and getting a boost from Charge Beam. However, I now protect on turn 2 to try and stall the Rain so that Anerith's Aqua Jet will do slightly less damage. I then take out the Mask Rain as before and become confused. Unfortunately, I don't get a boost this time, so it's not looking great. Anerith, of course, comes out just like last time. I protect during its invulnerable turn, and it's actually better that I not recover from Confusion on this turn like I did in the last battle I showed. If I recover here, then Illumise will reconfuse me, and I will actually have to deal with more turns of confusion. So I take out the Illumise on the next turn, and I snapped out a confusion here, and, and that's the optimal luck. Volbeat comes out, and I protect again to stall the rain. And knowing that I can't one-shot the Volbeat, I have to hope for confusion luck. I don't get it, and I'm brought down to neutral in my special attack. I again protect here to stall the rain, and Volbeat surprises me here by going for Moonlight, which... I'm pretty sure that means the battle's over, but 
This means I'll probably have a free turn in this situation in the future, which gives me a kind of a hint of how to win in future attempts. However, I pressed on just for experimental purposes and get a clutch critical hit to finish off the Volbeat. A Rock Grenade comes in and I know I can't hope to one shot it, but I try to get some Charge Beam boosts going and it won't attack because Rain Dance ended and the AI will prioritize that. So after two hits, I take it out and manage to get a boost from one of those hits. Yen Mega is the last Pokemon out for Shelly and is an easy one shot. No boost though, but I don't think that matters at this point. And now it's one versus one and Anorith doesn't outspeed, so... And finally beat Shelly in 40 attempts. Right after this, we have to battle Kane, and the Brion went down without a fight thanks to it missing Sing. Grimer was not a one shot, and then it disabled Swift, so I had to finish it off with Charge Beam. And then Nidoking and Marowak both fall to a confusion. Easy battle. Dr. Connell was a first try victory. Might not have been easy, but I got lucky on my first try. So as you see here, I got a crit against the Electivire, and then I had the foresight to hold a Cherry Berry so that the suspected Thunder Wave that actually happened uh, was cured and I wouldn't have to deal with that. So after taking out Electivire, Hypno comes in and I get a Charge Beam boost as it sets up Psychic Terrain. I wasn't sure if Confusion would one shot now, and it didn't. And then Hypno puts me to sleep. Luckily, it can't do a lot of damage, so I managed to wake up and take it out before it brings me below half health. Musharner comes in to set up the Psychic Terrain again, but I get another Charge Beam boost and then finish it off with Swift. And then Swift also takes out Alolan Raichu, and Confusion takes out Rotom. And it's time for my second gym battle against a type I'm weak to, but I wasn't as worried about Shade as I was against Shelly. So Gengar's an easy one-shot with Confusion, and very crucially, Cursed Body didn't activate. Dubblade comes in, and I use Charge Beam to change the field and get a boost. And with the changed field, Charge Beam deals more damage, and I can take out the Dubblade before it can take advantage of the Swords Dance it used. Mimikyu is of course going to be a two-shot because of Disguise, and it does decent damage with Shadow Claw. But it actually isn't a two-shot, and it gets in more damage before I finally take it down. Rotom easily falls, just as Dr. Connell's did. Uh, Delamize is no problem, I one-shot it, and then Bidette comes out, and thankfully it's also a one-shot. That was a bit scarier than I thought, mostly because the Mimikyu surprised me. I did take three attempts due to Cursed Body on one of the attempts and Charge Beam missing on another. And now it's time for round two against Zell, this time with Pulse Muck, which was much harder than the Pulse Tangroth battle with Zell. I can't one-shot the Glaceon, which results in it lowering my speed with Icy Wind, and if that happens, Espeon outspeeds me and uh, I can't win. So instead of fishing for the Icy Wind miss, I just equip the White Herb, as you probably saw fly by on the screen way too fast. So this is only attempt number two with the White Herb that I'm showing, and I managed to get to plus four by the time I take out Umbreon, which is definitely overkill, and then continues to be overkill as I take out the Espeon with an accidental charge beam. I meant to use Swift. And now I'm at plus five for the pulse, so this isn't really a challenge at all. Confusion easily one-shots it. It took me about 15 attempts before I just gave up and used the white herb, and then it only took two attempts with the white herb. And while I thought the pulse was a challenge, the real challenge is about to begin. And I never thought this battle would be challenging for anyone. But I'm talking about Victoria at Apophil. Her Pancham and Litten are now fully evolved to dark types which wouldn't be a huge problem, but they're both very bulky and hit really hard. Payback from Pangoro, as you see, does something like 75%, and I just can't find a way to take it out. I tried the red card for a while, but I was already at too low a health to get charge beam boosts going, and sometimes Incineroar would come out and just completely end me. I also tried Miracle Eye to allow me to hit dark types, this did allow Mewtwo to beat Pangoro, but then Incineroar just comes in again, and as I said previously, it just completely obliterates me. So I actually gave up because this isn't a mandatory battle, and I just kind of went to go beat up Cal, who I guess I'll show real quick, and we'll do this in the order I did it in. So I start off the battle with two charge beams, uh, getting boosts on both, and then I just swept through his team with confusion. It, it was really easy. Much easier than Victoria. Anyway, back to Victoria. Unfortunately, after you defeat Cal, you can't challenge Victoria, so I did have to do a save reset because I did figure out a way to beat Victoria while I was planning for Kiki. The Telluric Seed here is the key. On this field, the Telluric Seed gives you a Focus Energy effect, which is boosted such that all my attacks crit, or they have an insanely high crit chance, not sure which, 
but that is needed for me to get through the Victoria battle. Because of all that, I can two-shot the Pangoro with Charge Beam now, and I need both the boosts as well. Incineroar comes in next, and it is a 37.5% to one-shot with a plus two critical hit Swift, and on the 14th attempt with the Field Seed, I finally get it. And from there, the rest of Victoria's team is not a problem. I can just finish them off with Confusion and Swift. And uh, since that worked so well against Victoria, let's try it against Kiki. Machamp stands no chance, and I take it out with a single Confusion. Since I can't one-shot the Lucario, I might as well set up Charge Beam boosts here. I get lucky and go two for two on boosts. Then the Fighting Psychic combo types Metacham and Gallade fall to a crit Confusion each. Unburdened Hitmonlee comes in, and I can't outspeed it, so I just have to tank its hits. The critical hit fake out scared me a little bit, because the damage calcs I did before this were very close. And you can see I only have 17 HP left after knockoff. Of course, Hitmonlee does fall to a single confusion, bringing out the 4 times weak to Psychic Toxicroak. However, I can't just one-shot it, as you know it has Sucker Punch. And from past attempts, I know it will use all of its Sucker Punch PP, so I just spam Miracle Eye until it's safe to finally KO it. And that's Kiki in only five attempts. Thankfully, she didn't have any dark types like Victoria did, but the Field Seed was needed for Lucario and the Fighting Psychic combo types. And now this playthrough must come to an end. The two versus one on the Swamp Field against Astro and Eclipse wasn't a struggle for Gyarados. It was a bit of a struggle for Ivysaur, but not really. Uh, but they both had some advantages that Mewtwo just doesn't have. Both those Pokemon had strong, super effective attacks against Rock types, which was critical. Mewtwo does not have that. They also had reliable ways to boost their stats with Dragon Dance, Moxie, and Growth. Uh, Mewtwo is still relying on Charge Beam for that. And of course, in Gyarados' case, it was Flying type and could actually abuse the speed lowering effects of the field, whereas Mewtwo suffers greatly from it. I was actually surprised Mewtwo couldn't pull this off. In the back of my mind, I figured since Ivysaur could do it, Mewtwo could probably figure it out a way, but uh, it just is really, really hamstrung by its bad early game level up moveset. So the furthest I got was with the White Herb. I used Charge Beam twice to take out the Soul Rock, and I need boosts both times. I also need Lunatone to miss a Hypnosis, which it will only go for on turn one. Then the Lycan Rock comes out, and it is arranged to one shot with Confusion. The Simeon is next for Aster, and I still outspeed thanks to the White Herb and can take it out, and now it's a one on one, which would normally be great, but my speed is so low that it doesn't really matter and I've taken so much damage that th there's nothing really I can do at this point. You see here I went for Future Sight and Double Protect to take out Lunatone. That's not the point of Future Sight. I just wanted to say I got past the Lunatone. The plan with Future Sight was to try to use it to take out the Lycan Rock, or specifically the one with Accelerock, before it could finish me off. If I could optimally find a time to use Future Sight, I could then protect when the Lycan Rock comes out and let Future Sight KO it, but I just can't get that far. So yeah, I guess congrats to Astern Eclipse for claiming their first victim.